In this video, we're going to modify the gameplay for our Feed Aspen game for Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com, and in this video, we're going to modify our game so that when Aspen eats a red food, one of the blue food, the evil food, the bad food, disappears, and then a new red food appears. So every time she hits a red, one of the blues disappears until there's no blue left and we win the game. This will teach us a little bit more about sprite groups and how to add and remove sprites from them programmatically without collisions or with collisions and should be interesting. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our file from the last video. I've renamed it Aspen underscore collide 8.py. The last video was 7.py. And the first thing I want to do is come down here to the draw method. And down here at the bottom here, we have this self.score equals 8 for winning. It'll put the you win text on the screen. We need to change that to seven because we actually only put seven blue on the screen and one red that means eight, but it should be seven. So, okay, we've got that. Now let's come up here to the check collisions. And right here is where when we get the red food, we increase our score by one. We also remove that red food. Well, that's great, but we need to now do some more things. So first we need to add a new red food. Right? So once we catch a food, we want a new red food to pop up somewhere. And we also want our blue food to disappear, one of the blue foods, but we'll do that in just a second. So all we need to do is go self.food group. We need to add a new red food. So dot add. And this is the same way we created all of our food when we first initiated the game, initialized the game, right? So we're familiar with dot add already. We're going to add a food. We want to put it, I don't know, let's say 190 by 200. Now, maybe you want to randomize that and we could do that later if you want, but we'll just stick it there on the screen. And this is going to be a self dot red underscore food. And we want to give it a one because remember, food is either a one or a zero. If it's zero, it's blue. If it's one, it's red. So self dot red food we can do because up here we have defined our blue food and our red food, but we didn't give it a self. We just made a local variable. So we probably should change that. We'll change blue food to self and red food to self. And then down here, when we initialize, when we initially create our food the very first time when the game starts, we need to modify that to self.redfood and self.bluefood. So, okay, that looks good, I think. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. I'm in my C slash games directory. My virtual environment is turned on and let's run Python Aspen underscore collide eight dot pi. And here's our game. Let's see. Man, that's really moving. Okay, say, ah, so now every time we <laughs> hit a red, that's getting tricky. Ah, only two lives left. A new red pops up, right? So that's what we want. So, okay, that's good. But now we also want to remove a blue food every time we get one red food. So that's going to be sort of how we determine whether or not we win or not if we get all the blue foods. So I think that's going to be the gist of the game. So let's head over here. And how do we determine how many things are in our food groups and how do we change them? How do we do anything with our food groups? Well, let's come back here and down to our check collision section again. Every time we get a red food, let's just uh, print out and let's go self.foodgroup.sprites. And let's just see what this returns. This is kind of interesting. Let's run this again real quick. And let's get a red food. And now we'll just close it. And you can see this is returning a Python list with all of our food sprites. So we have a food sprite and another food sprite. That's two. And then three, four, five, six, and seven, and then eight. So we have eight because one of them is red. The rest of them are blue. Now, before we modified our code here, you can see, let's change this. So remember, when we get the red food, we're going to remove it, right? And if we don't add a new one, let's run this and see how this changes the sprite thing we just did here. So let's come up here and boom, there we go. Now, when we close this, there is one, two, three, four, five six, seven. So there's seven sprites. So by removing the red one, we've removed one sprite from the food group. And that's easy when there's a collision, right? 
but we want to remove something from the sprite group when there isn't a collision. So when we collide with the red, we remove the red, but how do we remove a blue? Because we're not colliding with the blue. When we collide with the blue, it doesn't disappear, it kills Aspen, right? So how do we do that? Well, there's several different ways and let's take this out so that uh, we're still adding our red one back in. And remember, this is returning a Python dictionary, right? See these brackets? That means everything inside of here is a Python dictionary, right? It's a list. Each of these are items in the Python list and we can remove items from a Python list fairly easily. We just need to say which one. And you know, this is the zeroth one, this is the oneth one, the twoth one, the threeth one, the fourth one, the fiveth one, and the sixth one, right? So that's Python list start at zero. What we can do is just name one to remove, or we could just randomly select any item from the list and remove it. So let's do that. So let's get rid of this print thing. We don't need this. Let's say randomly remove blue food from sprites in food group. Now we're probably going to need to do that first, right? Because otherwise we might randomly accidentally remove the red one. But if we haven't added back a red one in yet, there isn't a red one. So anything we remove is definitionally going to be a blue one. So uh, let's go ahead and add the red one after we've removed something that's a blue one, right? So, okay, how do we do that? Well, let's just call random dot choice and wrap this whole thing in there. Now we can call random.choice because way back at the beginning of this whole playlist, we imported random, Python random library. So we can call on that. Now this will select a random item from that Python list, but then what do we do once we've selected it? We want to dot kill it, right? <laughs> Seems very dramatic. And then add in another red one after that. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that. See how this looks. Now we're still gonna need to do some work here but we're starting to get there at least. So man, it's moving slow, boom. And every time you create a red one, see this, the velocity, the speed gets randomly selected. So sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's not. And you'll notice every time I'm hitting a red one, a blue one is disappearing. Now there's just two left. Oh, oh, we died. Now there's just one left and now there's none left and we've put another red one up on the screen and it says you win there. So, okay. We're starting to get there. Now we probably don't want another red one to appear at the end. So how can we fix that? Well, we can at any time determine how many things are in our food group, right? So this self.food group, if we want to say right when we hit a red one, let's just print out the length of that. So that's the len function. So if we save this, come back here, let's clear the screen and run this guy again. And let's just quickly get a couple, two, three, let's do them all, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now you'll see it started with eight, then there's seven, six, five, four, three, and it ends up with two. We can then take this information and run an if statement. Let's say logic to remove blue and add red. Let's go if the len of our self.food group is, let's say, greater than zero, right? There's more than zero. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want to remove a blue. If there's nothing left on the screen, we don't want to remove a blue because there's nothing to remove, right? So we'll do that. And then we also now want to add a red, but we don't want to add a red if the game is over, right? So we just saw at the end there, once we got all the blue gone, there was still that red one floating around. We don't want that. So let's go if len of self.food group is greater than or equal to one, then we'll add some food else. So if it's not greater than or equal to one, that means pretty much the game is over. So let's go self.aspen underscore group dot reset. And remember this just puts Aspen at the bottom of the screen. And we might also want to play the little, you know, game over sound. So let's go self dot game underscore over underscore sound dot play. Okay, so that looks good. I think let's go ahead and save this and give this a run. See if it worked. See if we got our numbers right. So here we go. Oh, 
Oh, a bunch of stuff happened there. Okay, so we won. It played the thing. You might not have heard it because I've got my volume down, but it did play the sound that we looked at in the last video. Our score is seven. Aspen has been put down to the bottom of the screen, and that looks good. Let's run it again just to make sure because it got a little jumbled there at the end. We hit a bunch of things all at once. Let's see. Woo! I'm in fast and furious. All right, one left. Boom. It knocked us down. It said you win on the screen. The score is seven. Our lives are five. We're good to go. Now, we're also going to want to reset this game or put a little thing on the screen that says hit enter to play again and then reset the lives and the score and all that stuff. Or maybe we'll make it, you know, round two and make everything a little faster. I haven't really decided which of those yet, but hey, this is coming right along. So fairly easy to remove things from our sprite group here. We just need to know really that this self.foodgroup.sprites returns a Python list with all the sprites in them. And then we don't even really need to know which sprites are what. We could just randomly select an item from that list using random.choice and then dot kill it. Easy peasy. Now, uh, I might want to come down here and modify this because every time we add a new food, it gets added to the same spot, 190 by 200. So maybe we might want to randomize this between you know 0 and 190 and 0 and 200 or whatever the numbers need to be. You can play around with creating random numbers. Just use Python random number functionality. But otherwise, we're coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.